Hello everyone. Welcome back to Reviews with Favorite Day. Today, we are going to review a brand new supernatural horror film, Black Phone. Yeah, you heard a lot of hype about Black Phone. Well, today, I'm going to give you the 411 on Black Phone. So let's get it started. Black Phone. Black Phone. Okay, Black Phone was a very interesting concept. The new supernatural horror film was directed by Scott Derrickson. First off now, there was no Alfred Hitchcock stuff going on exactly, but there was a great nostalgic 70s feel about it, some good camera work, and at times, Black Phone had a sort of a menagerie of styles. I noticed a little bit of Spike Lee type shots, a tiny bit of Stephen King, and a teensy bit of Jordan Peele, which made for a very interesting style of horror. And bingo, bingo, come to find out, Black Phone is adapted from the 2004 short story, same name, Black Phone, by a writer that goes by the pen name of Joe Hill. Okay, now y'all remember that name. Well, he's well known in the industry, I guess, but looky, looky, Lee. <laughs> I didn't realize that this Joe Hill is the son of my very favorite writer, Stephen King, master of horror. I knew I smelt the likes of a Stephen King film here. And look at this picture amazing how he favors his father stephen king himself anyway y'all back to black phone <laughs> so black phone's story is set in the year 1978 in a small suburban town in denver colorado spoiler alert here you guys i'm sorry but i got a lot of inquiries about this black phone film so this will be somewhat of a spoilers review so and the premise of Black Phone is centered around a child kidnapper and murderer that's on the loose in this town known as The Grabber. Played super convincingly well by Ethan Hawke of all people, yep. The Grabber is kidnapping and killing young middle school age boys. And the main stars of this little plot are Finney Shaw and his sister Gwen Shaw, portrayed by Mason Thames and Madeline McGraw. Now, their father, Terrence Shaw, he's portrayed by Jeremy Davis. Well, the father is a single parenting dad with the mother having committed suicide years ago, leaving the dad as a broken, pitiful, alcoholic piece of a man that beats his kids in 70s styles from time to time. But despite all of that, these kids, miserable home life, etc., Finney and Gwen survive it well because they have a deep siblings bond. They look out for each other no matter what. Now, Finney, the central protagonist, is just a simple, likable kid that in the 70s basically would be rated as a nobody in the popularity scheme of things at school. But Finney has something very special about him. For one, he has a killer kick-ass friend named Robin, or I can't say it, Arellano played by Miguel Caceres Mora, and Finney's sister, Gwen, who was quite unique and fairly popular at school, but very, very smart in contrast to her brother. And the best thing these kids really have is each other. They are a tight-knit group, and their closeness is a theme that is emphasized throughout the movie time and again, especially when they come up against the school bullies or their father, and even the police, practically anybody, they always stood together and made it through. So, Little Sisters Gwen character is so convincing as this truly amazing, fearless, stubborn, smart, back-talking, cussed to authorities and God, fearing, praying, <laughs> and believe it or not, real-life clairvoyant or seer to boot. Yes, child, this little girl, Gwen, actually gets clues about the grabber from dreams where she can see things that have happened in the past or might happen in the future. Yep, I know it's a stretch, but big butt here, no pun intended. <laughs> this is a supernatural horror movie, so y'all just chill out. And we find out that Gwen has evidently inherited these strange powers from her mother, who her father Mr. Shaw explains at some point in the film, it's the reason why the mother committed suicide long ago, because she just couldn't handle it anymore. So of course, Mr. Dad forbids his daughter from using her gift. However, 
Miss Gwen insists on doing it behind his back anyway because she's just that kind of girl. Oh my God, people, the police, the police are extremely goofy in this picture. And just can't handle the fact that this little girl seems to know certain clues and things about the grabber that nobody else does. And they eventually do come around and begin to rely on Gwen's informative gift. However, in one really hard to watch scene, Gwen's dad whoops her ass mercilessly, old school style. The today's get your ass in jail style whooping. And he does this to ensure that Gwen just stop telling these tales of her dreams to people and the police and just let it be. The father is an idiot, though, but he just doesn't know any other way to keep Gwen from ending up like her mother. So that is until until one day the grabber takes Finney's best friend, Robin, and soon eventually even grabs brother Finney. Ooh. And the whole damn town and school assembles and meetings are held, mirroring today's world of mass killings on the news, of children and such, and the police are on fire and everybody's up in arms, as they should be, as they sadly discuss the latest grabber's kidnapping victim, Wynn's brother, Finney. <sighs> All right, now, y'all, at this point, I'm only going to tell you one more key bit of info here about the black phone. So, after the grabber kidnapped Finney, he hid him away in a soundproof area of his home where there's nothing there but an old mattress bed and a clearly broken and disconnected black phone. Yep, the old black phone trip. Anyway, soon after the kidnapping, the grabber introduces his crazy ass to Finney. He is crazy as fuck, I'm sorry. And then he would leave Finney alone, all alone, strangely enough, for long periods of time. Sometimes even leaving the door unlocked. You know, it was something to that. But during these times, that black phone, that broke black phone, would ring incessantly with calls that only Finney can hear or receive. And when Finney would pick up and answer the black phone, my God, it would be the voice of one of the boys the grabber had previously kidnapped and killed. They were trying to reach back out to Finney by way of this black phone. And even his best friend, Robin, called once. That was sad. Very cool concept, though, guys. Each call to Finney he would receive from them, they were trying to assist Finney in figuring a way out of the grabber's lair. And also, on some of the calls, Finney would receive warnings of the grabber's whereabouts and the grabber's tactics to entice Finney to come on upstairs and engage in the grabber's sick-ass game called Naughty Boy. And again, the recurring theme of the children rallying together. Beautiful. Especially his sister Gwen, who basically carries the ball on this whole damn thing of trying to help the police locate Finney's whereabouts so they can together try and save her brother. Okay, like I said, Black Phone is a great concept, a good script, and the acting is just okay. However, through all of that, the movie is saved by Madeline McGraw's scene-stealing winning performance as little sister Gwen. She stood out as a shining star in this whole little horror film, and I'm hopeful we'll see this little actress again in bigger and better projects to come. So now basically, that's as much of a spoiler detail that I'm giving away today. And believe me, there's lots more I could tell you, but just remember, there's nothing like seeing a real thing at the movies itself. Final thoughts, final thoughts. Okay, I thought Black Phone was pretty good. For a B-movie like this, Black Phone did its job. There were some goofy parts, but there also was some pretty clever twists, a couple of them at the end of the movie that you won't see coming. So I recommend Black Phone. I give Black Phone a 3.75 stars out of five. And you can take children, but they must be older kids. Middle school and up will probably understand it. Finally, finally, if you have not subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? At Reviews with Faye Renee, we just love new subscribers. It's 100%, no obligation, it's all free. Just hit that red subscribe button once below, check the little bell, and you will be reminded only once the next time I drop the next 
hot, super fun, powerful, funny, and unconventional review by Fairy Nay. We are now streaming again on the brand new Infinity TV network. Just download the app for Roku, go to the channel guide, and find out when Reviews with Fay Renee is showing. And also, you can always find us on IG, FB, and of course, on our website, www.reviewswithfayrenee.com. You don't want to miss the next exciting video drop, Elvis. <laughs> so I'll see you next week, same place, same time. Until then, that's it, that's all. This is Fay Renee.